Okay, it's 1135. Um, this is August 16, 2022. We're here for the 2023 budget hearing for the Geauga County Park District. Tammy, would you start by going through the numbers contained on this sheet? Uh, in the general fund, there's an estimated unencumbered beginning cash balance of 834829 uh, The requested revenue in the amount of 6899575 which we will approve. Estimated expenses of $7,258,920 with an ending balance of four uh, the land improvement fund beginning cash of $2,548,951. Uh, requested revenue in the amount of $50,000, which we will certify. Estimated expenses of $1,500,000. And the ending balance of $1,098,951. Uh, capital reserve account beginning cash of $29,223. Uh, no revenue requested, estimated expenses of $29,000, leaving an ending cash balance of $223. Uh, the K-9 fund has a beginning cash balance of $78, requested revenue in the amount of $400, which we will certify, estimated expenses of the same, and an ending balance of $78. And then they have a reserve fund. Uh, total millage for tax year uh, 2022 is 07 um, and it's all current expense or general fund 0.9 and one point for a total of 2.6 miles. Okay, who wants to go first? <clears throat> Chuck, I just had a couple questions. With the, um, so I know there's two pending reserve funds. We don't have them reflected on here because we didn't. Yeah, I, I go over those in mind. Oh, okay. So I didn't know if that money was, where is that? So do these estimate, their estimated expenses, I'm guessing include cash transfers to those reserve funds? Yes. Okay. Why don't you go first? Please. Okay. So um, we asked for a series of items um, which you've supplied, including Schedule A, Schedule B. Uh, you generated your schedule A and B. It appears to be through UAN, but the spreadsheets, it appears that the budget was submitted on a spreadsheet. Is that accurate? Is that? Um, let, me, let me introduce Jennifer Page. Jen, Jen is our new fiscal officer, and I believe he did utilize. Um, of course. Yeah, yeah, UAN for the. So, to, the, so these are. Yeah, let me make sure we're. Your budget talking. is right here. So, yeah. so yeah. these are, you. this is a UAN sheet? No, that is done on Excel. Okay, so this is what you submitted for the budget. We, we didn't get the UAN version of this, right? No. Okay. It, nor are we statutorily required to generate a UAN budget. Yeah, I, I understand that, but I, we've had conversations for four years that I've been here. You know, there's been a there's been a series of errors that were identified as in part due to spreadsheet based math that we can't we, here's an example we can't interrogate a cell on a spreadsheet if you give me this piece of paper we can't interrogate whether this is a formula or if somebody just typed a number in so unless i have a staff that goes through and actually does all of the math we can't validate that this is in fact done with good math last year for example we we were able to discover it because we did do all that math. And I think even the board commented last year that spreadsheets are great tools, but they're not accounting systems. You know, and you know, your move to UAN was really welcomed, I think, by the entire community because outputs from UAN are, are mathematically accurate. They're not altered. They're, whereas a spreadsheet, you can dump a spreadsheet and change anything you want. It's it's free format. So, I mean, that's just something I guess I'm surprised at considering the number of years that we have addressed and raised the concern that spreadsheet based accounting is really not standardized accounting. That's why people use products like UAN mm -hmm. and other accounting. I mean, the county uses New World, but it's we don't dump our products into a spreadsheet so it can be altered. That's just a comment. 
statutorily, you're right. You don't have to provide it in that manner. However, we do have a duty as a budget commission of vetting these numbers. And the more complicated and difficult a budget is, your budget is not insignificant. You've got a pretty significant budget. It's very difficult for people to validate numbers when they're working with a spreadsheet. So that's the comment I'll make. Could you go to the next slide? So here's an example. I, I just took, and just for the sake of, we'll just leave it there. I printed out your budget. So this, you just can grab one and pass it along. This sheet is your submitted first page of the budget for the general fund. I'll wait till everybody gets them. <clears throat> So the first page I passed out is your submitted 2023 uh, budget in spreadsheet form. And I just want to draw attention to the column that's uh, identified as actual 2020 unaudited numbers. I've circled some numbers in uh, blue, which are represented in the column that says from the 2023 budget submission. It begins with $4,721,369. So your beginning balance identified in your submitted budget in 2023 is $4.721 million. Um, your general fund revenue is identified in your, your spreadsheet at $7,317,609. Your expenditures are at $6,593,751 which leaves an ending balance of 5,445 and some change. So the process that we go through is we, we have to know if the starting point of any budget is good because mistakes made multiple years ago reflect currently forward balanced. So we took your budget submission from last year, which is the second document that I passed around. That one is your 2022 submitted budget, which also has a column identified, and we, we vetted that last year, um, as your beginning balance for 2020, your revenue, your expenditures, and likewise your ending balance. And that represented column is the red. So if you look, it would make sense to anybody in the public looking at last year's budget submission and this year's budget submission, that the numbers for 2020, which are historical in both cases, should be the same. There are reasons why those would change. Um, one reason would be an audit. If somebody came in and audited you and they altered some number, that would, in effect, change your beginning balance for that next period. You did have an audit which appeared, we, we didn't know why those would change, so we went online to the state auditor's site, and you did have an audit for calendar years 2018 and 2019, which was released to you on 11-18-2021. We were able to verify the numbers you provided were the same numbers that that audit result showed. Now, I don't know, did, did they make an audit change to your to your beginning balance or your ending balance for 2019? Statutorily, we are required to, prom to provide our actuals. There's no nothing in statute that says it has to be in a certain format. UAN is a financial product, like New World System. So you as a fiscal person, enter that information into New World System. And then the state auditor's office, when you're done, <laughs> it's usually in looking back, audits those numbers. So to address your issues that you started with with UAN, we are not statutorily required to use a financial system that you prescribe to pass a tax budget. Statutorily, according to the Ohio Revised Code, we are to provide our actuals from the prior two years, our estimate for the current year, and our estimate for the upcoming year that's the basis of our tax budget. As everyone is well aware, we went through a transition last year of our finances from the um, county being our fiscal mm -hmm. officer um, to 
uh, independent audit. As part of that, we worked with uh, James G. Zepka, which is an independent auditing firm, to look at our amounts. I wanted, as a new fiscal officer, I wanted to make sure that we had, uh, you know, <laughs> confidence in the, our actuals from prior years, knowing that we had an audit ongoing with the state auditor's office. So the numbers that are presented in our tax budget have been provided by the state auditors that for an audit that is ongoing, which is not public record because it is this auditing, but James Zepka did get those numbers. So it is unaudited. Those are the actuals for the prior two years. So to use our budget submission from prior year isn't, we've done work since 2020, this time last year, to get those numbers. So we have confidence from the state auditor's office and James Zepka that the two prior years are good. That's where those numbers that came from, and those were what was entered into UAN. And if I may add, uh, pursuant to your letter that was forwarded out, this is John Slater. I'm counsel for the Park <laughs> District. On February 7th, you identify in your second paragraph, this went to the Geauga Park District, that all submitted budgets must, must present actual revenue expenses for the two previous years. Is that what we presented? Jennifer? Yes, the, okay. the numbers that are presented. doesn't identify a requirement that there be budgeted numbers for two previous years, and I believe that what you've presented here are actually running off of the budgeted, not actual. No, effects, that's, right? not, that's not true. Okay. So, then, so yeah, if you re could we could rewind to 2022 okay. last year. Last year's requirement was two prior years submission. Of, so prior to actual numbers? Of actual. Okay. That's all the, the requirements by statute don't change year over year. Okay. What only only thing that happens is it shifts one year every year. Did we so, provide two years actual in our submission this year? Yes. Okay. But your 2020 actual submission doesn't match last year's 2020 actual submission. And that's what I just explained to you. And, and to, to your point is we both were identified as unaudited. So audited ones I understand can change because that's what auditors do. But both the submission of 2022 and 2023, which identified the line item, the column of 2020, were unaudited numbers. You it's been an audited. audit in process. But, but you identified them on your submission as actual 2020 unaudited. Because according to statute, until the audit is released yeah. by the state auditor's office, I cannot well, I cannot in good conscience say these are audited numbers, well, I can but tell these numbers have been provided and vetted by not only the state auditor's office, but then checked by James C. Zepka. Well, well here's, the, here's, here's something that's strange. So if you just skip down then below to the 2020 general fund property tax identifier, that's money that I, my office provides to the park. We are the deliverer of that money. We don't collect it. I mean, you guys have stated in your public meetings, the auditors collects, the auditor collects taxes. We don't. This gentleman collects taxes. I am the one who distributes the tax. Our records are the ones that identify how much money we gave the park. So column, the, the money that you've identified that we gave the park for 2020 is different from the submission you did last year to the submission you did this year. How can the money that we gave you, I get you're saying you had an outside accounting firm do some things with uh, expenditures, because I get it. But from this perspective, we are the ones that gave you the money. We can't have changed what we gave you. We would have to know that. So how do you explain the identifying general fund property tax collection to be a different number from one year to the next? It's the same period, still both 2020. So the, the again, and this is what I found very interesting. We have to come and defend information that you are presenting to us for the first time that we're seeing this, that you put together these document spreadsheets. Let me finish, please. And so I did not get a chance to, like we, we made a public records request. Can you please get this information ahead of time? I think, it, like in good faith, 
Well, like, uh, and then you're just like, if I could, I, I, if I could I, interrupt I, you for a minute. No, can you not? Let me finish, please. So what is in column, the red column? That was the tax budget for 22. Is that correct? It says the submission you gave us okay, the last no, year last year for so, the 2022 so, tax budget right. so this shows the, the 2020 numbers. Okay, so yes. so this time last year, the red <clears throat> column was what was the park stated the, right. their numbers were okay. for 2020. What tax budget are we here for today? 2023. That's correct. So why are we arguing about 2022? Because the numbers have to balance. You're telling me that you can change the reporting of what the county gave the park year over year, and no one's going to ask, where did the $6,290 go? Don't, isn't the public entitled to understand why, if they look at two sets of numbers, that, that the revenue you got from the county last year, or in 2020, was reported last year, $6,290 different than the revenue that you reported for that same period of time this year. There should be some identifier that says, why did that change? Where in the statute does it say we have to? It says you have that. to give accurate numbers, actual numbers, actual. And the How actual you... numbers have been provided to you but they're after different that they- For the same period. So you have never in your experience with an audit had an auditor come in and everything is great. So these are unaudited numbers. It's an audit in process. No, but the audit in process didn't change the revenue I gave you. But this was the document from last year that was provided. You're missing you're missing what I'm trying to get to you on. So where on the 23 tax budget is that six million? It's on your tax budget. If you look at the circled, you actually identified it in yellow. But look at the orange right before, right underneath the two blue circles on mine. It's this sheet right here. It's right there. Right. Look where you identify your revenue. Under revenue, you have general property tax. Correct. If you go over to reported for actual 2022. So that is tax money that Mr. Mr. Hitchcock billed the taxpayers for. I then distributed to you. You've identified it at 6.9 million in some change. Where this is your submission, not mine. Okay, where on the 23, I am not seeing six million eight hundred ninety-six dollars one hundred and seven. That's what you submitted last year was your revenue. But here's what I'm telling you: our numbers don't match yours, they match last year's numbers. So our records. The money we gave you matches the six million eight hundred ninety-six one seventy-six, not your six million nine hundred two thousand. Where where are you getting this change that we gave you different amount of money by six thousand dollars? We don't have a record of that, and that money came from my office to the park district. It it didn't get mixed up in some other monies. It didn't get misinterpreted. And actual is always actual. No auditor came to me and said. Uh, you need to take back six thousand two hundred ninety dollars. Now we're balance. Now we're in balance. We're not. We're not in balance. So I can't even come to your number. I I cannot figure out if your revenue reported for 2020 actual. It doesn't balance to any number we have that we gave you. Then that is an issue. Again, these numbers were provided and vetted by the state auditor's office, and yeah, they're by provided by you. These are unaudited. You provided by you as part of the two year look back. But the state requires. The state hasn't given us anything yet. The state auditor hasn't reported. You would think the state auditor, if they've identified that we really didn't give you six million eight hundred ninety six thousand one hundred seventy six, they would have told my office, uh, your books are off by six thousand two hundred ninety bucks. You really gave them six million nine hundred two thousand four hundred sixty six. They're actually saying we gave you more money than we gave you. I, 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 can't, I can't resolve that as an auditor. I mean, you could be doing this five years, five months, or five days. It's got to balance. The numbers have to balance. And you can argue all you want about the state auditor will come in and, and it's in process, but in process can't change your revenue that's coming from a single source. I'm collecting taxes from people. 
I'm giving it to you. That money is X. It doesn't become Y next year just because a year went by unless money got moved. And we can't resolve it. Well, first of all, we appreciate your comments on it. But you know, I just want to point out that on, in your February 7th, 2022 letter that you wrote, you indicated that the auditor intends to provide each district with a copy of the budget hearing summary sheet, GCA002, at least one week prior to the hearing. Uh, we received <coughs> that form last Thursday. Uh, and I'd just like to submit for the record our attempts to try to receive any information explaining these concerns that you're identifying apparently over this $6,000 amount or whatever they may be, because we're more than willing to address those issues, you know, if we have the proper time. I mean, I've been at the last three meetings that took place over, I think, the last 20 minutes it took for you to go through the analysis of the previous bodies, and we've been here longer than the entirety of those matters. But I'm going to submit to you a communication from fiscal officer requesting more information concerning the GCA 020 that was submitted on, uh, first of all, we immediately the day we received it, we asked for more information to communicate based on that. We had no response. So that's evidence of that submission. And I'll hand this out. But I'd like to make this part of the record. The next day, we communicate again in 959. We had no response on a phone call, on an email, no response. That same day at four o'clock, we communicated again, submit that, and that seems to be passed around and made part of the record. Who are you we giving had, those to? Excuse me? Who are you giving those to? Well, to the board. Okay. Is there a certain procedure I, I just, want me to hand them out? I just, Unless you want me to hand them to each individual. No, I just want to be clear what it is that you're Sure, I'm handing them to the individual next okay. to me. So if you, and there's more than enough copies for everyone in this room. Yeah, I, I think then we'll, again, I, think... I submit I haven't finished yet. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, of actual public records request uh, to this body, you know, I'll handle kind of out in addition to the requests that were submitted. And that specifically, I had bold and highlighted the fact that I made a request generally for all this information, but in specifically identified and highlighted the fact that. You're you're submitting it. We don't need you to read it. Yeah. Okay. This is our meeting, not yours. So submit. No, no. I am. Submit but I'm, I'm allowed to present and talk about what's here. And I asked no, specifically no, no. You're, for you're submitting their worksheets, the presentation, all this information. That's all I said. I said email it to me. Don't mail it. So we have the opportunity to do it. You're here. You're saying I want to look out for the benefit of the taxpayers for Jada County. And all we're asking for is a right to when did you ask, When did you ask for that? Extremely simple. Friday, Friday, and our fiscal office. Friday. Friday. What, what time? You promised what us Friday? that a week before this hearing we would get this information. You said no, you received it the week before. We don't look give your people. February, we don't give people worksheets before the hearing. You, you we like, gave you the the you date. Like this is some kind of ambush. ambush. How are we ambushing? It is an ambush. That's exactly right. How are we ambushing you with your own numbers? You you got to. Okay. So all you have to do. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. It's our meeting. All your fiscal staff had to do was carry a number over from one column to the next column. Okay, so I have a fifth grader right. that could have accomplished okay, so that. Then and then you come issue. in here, and then you come in here and act like this is some sort of ambush. You didn't well, add. Why didn't you call me up and say, or have your attorney call me up? Because you said we can only communicate now with the attorneys in your office when we want to communicate. Well, let, let's body. let's put this. Why didn't you just say we have an issue well, here? You ha you ask, can you please clear it you're up? You're asking a question. I'll give you the answer. Okay. Four o'clock before the hearings begin, the night be the work night before, you ask for a comprehensive public records request of any and all work materials related to the Jaga Park District. We had 32 hearings between that time and now. You're the last of 32 hearings. We've been in hearings nonstop for two days. So apparently you received my document. You didn't have what we're saying is public records requests have know what the issue. public records requests do follow reasonable attempt to accomplish. And if, with all, I mean, we responded back to you and told you it was under legal review. You um, told us, and all I said is, you know so, what, give us what you have so far. Give us a presentation so we can look at it. There were seven people We were desperately pleading for any more information other than 
a single line or two. So, I really, so, yeah, so, so hang on a second. As long as we're so all, let's work as long as we're working together. Right, let's do it. Five and a half hours before, Ms. Pay sent a, a request on, on, on Thursday. She had sent a document to about 20 individuals, seven of which work at the Auditor of State's office. One works for Cuyahoga County. Basically saying these three items they brought up are all nonsense, and here's why. She didn't have any lack of understanding in her mind of what the issues were. I'm happy to read that for you. I have a copy of it. Ms. Pay uh, at exactly 10.35 in the morning on August 11th, which is Thursday, she wrote to all of the board members of Jaga Park. She wrote to the League of Women Voters. She wrote to uh, Mr. Allred, who is the district manager for the, for the Auditor of State. Matt, wrote, Matt, who used to be the, uh, the Chardon fiscal officer, now works at the Auditor of State. Other people from the Auditor of State, an individual from Cuyahoga County, yourself, is included in here. Um, other people that I don't recognize from Macaulay, uh, on and on and on, a list of 20 some email addresses and says, good morning. Now, does that need to be right in the record? Well, you've We're asked for information. I'm trying to provide it. We could record. submit it. I mean, it says, I mean, it's part of it. It says, good morning. In light of the upcoming Jaga Park yeah. District 2023 tax budget hearing with the Jaga County Tax Budget Commission scheduled for August 16th, 2022 at 1135, I'm sharing the GCA 020 form which was generated by the Tax Budget Commission and forwarded to me in advance of the hearing, as well as other supporting documents. The form GC020 that the Jaga Park District received this week is very concerning. As you may recall, at the 2022 Tax Budget Commission hearing last August, GDP's voted outside millage was reduced by 0.5 mills by the Jaga Tax Budget Commission. 0.6. I'm sorry, point. In that, but... Point six. It matters too. It matters. Thank you for correcting me. Despite Ohio Revised Code Section 5705.31a, which states, the Commission shall ascertain that the following levies have been properly author authorized, and if so authorized, shall approve them without modification. A, all levies in excess of the 10 mil limitation, end of quote. This has resulted in an approximate $2 million revenue loss. Actually, it's 1.9 mil, and it is important that we get that correct, to the park district, or nearly one third of the revenues approved by Geauga County voters to preserve, conserve, and protect the natural features of Geauga County and to provide out, out, outdoor recreational experiences for our residents of every age, every ability, and at all times of the year. See attached for GPD expenditure data. The Park District has appealed, the, so we're going into the appeal, has appealed the Tax Budget Commission's 2022 reduction of millage and is awaiting a decision from the Ohio Board of Tax Appeals. The information that Jaga Park District assembled for was modeled on the packet that the city of Chardon submitted for its 2022 budget, which there were no issues in advance of their hearing last year. See attached city of Chardon 2022 form. Further, the three issues that the Tax Commission identified for the Park District's 2023 tax budget are apparently outside of what is required of a Tax Budget Commission outlined in the Ohio Revised Code. Issue one, tax levy revenue not split out, real estate tax and property tax act, uh, allocation. Then, then Ms. Is Page, that inaccurate? Is that required somewhere by the Revised Code? The, yes I, the reason we are identifying is because we can't align your property tax. So if you've broken out tax allocation somewhere else, it could explain your error. But you don't know whether it does or not. Bec no, because she already has identified. Again, so, and again, I'm just trying to find out what is has not been provided. Well, well, I understand it looks like there is an issue. Let me read what her answer. She's already determined what the answer is. She already, right? said, she didn't she she already said she didn't provide the UAN and that because she isn't statutorily required to provide it. But if we're going to get to the bottom of whether a levy is properly authorized, we need to vet all this information. That's the point. And that's what we're here to do. Guess what is that's required what by the revised code? And knowing to now determine what whether numbers, a levy is this, this properly authorized. Five knowing minutes. what these numbers are, now that you've given us this sheet, now that you've explained your concern, we'll walk through whatever those are. These are your than You gave them to us. You, you, again, you act like we're, we're giving you... 
we're just showing you what you right. gave well, us. A lot of it's information. Some secret. Explain to you. Right. It's information we had coming, these being collected state. by the treasurer, being distributed by you. You know the amount that was distributed to us. Exactly. Last year. Exactly. But you're so, reporting it to us as required by law. Right. Which but you're we reporting it in error. The state auditor's it, office. And no, the that state that auditor's office has not audited. Well, our distribution audited, to you. The numbers came from that. We identified that they're unaudited. You're, so you're telling me the state auditor has changed my distribution to you? That's of how what it's recorded. Of how the property tax saying where the because, information came from. Right. Is, is this recorded? What do you mean? How the numbers it's recorded? required to be audited? You know how it's recorded. These, it could the be there is LGS. Them? There is the... Um, no, 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 no. There is property the Property tax is not LGS. There is also the expenditures that are taken out of property tax. So you know, like fees? The fees. That so wouldn't be on the revenue number. So it's no, it's grossed up. It's grossed up on right. revenue. It's grossed up on revenue. So, again, this has been what is provided for the actuals in 2020 and 21 have been what has been provided to the Geauga Park District from the state auditor's office. Well, then maybe the state auditor Green. should be here well, so we can ask the questions. You must not have the answers, so what do you want us okay. to do? So we are required by statute to provide our actuals for the prior two years. This is the best information that we have because we have an audit in process. Is that correct? Or do you, have you ever had an audit in process? I'm not, I'm not here to answer your questions of what my audit cycle is. Well, you're a financial person. I'm asking you a question. What I'm simply you? asking you is I have never been through an audit where while doing the audit, an auditor is changing your historical numbers, which violate what the person who gave you the money says was given to you. Well, that doesn't I make any sense. I think we need to bring the, the state auditors. Are you required to, to provide about. audited numbers in order to go? No, to you're required to give us actual numbers. We know for a fact how much money. To be, you're saying that they have to be audited. No, I'm not saying that. So I'm saying that they have to match. Obviously, there there seems to be a discrepancy from earlier audited numbers, but if if we're not required to provide you audited numbers. If we're not required to do it for this particular year, as you're looking at our tax budget, what is the legal issue with what we've provided? I understand you may not like the fact that they we don't didn't manage. utilize a program. We understand that there may be some issue there that we will need to figure out and decide there's a six thousand dollar discrepancy here, correct? Is that what we're talking about? On this line item, yes. On this line item. And we appreciate the fact that you've identified this, but again, legally we submitted you actual unaudited numbers we identified them as such never represent them as anything other than that you've just indicated we don't have to provide audited numbers you're going back to previous audited numbers from 2020 and you know they haven't been audited yet and you're holding that against us honestly I'm holding it against you i'm asking for consistency in your reporting you well, provided us consistent. that same if you let me if you let me finish now change the revenue number. if you would let it last year you provided the same information unaudited for the same period to a different number. I can't understand why if both submissions were unaudited, both are for the same period for the same identified property tax, why wouldn't they be the same? She's saying it's because you're in the middle of an audit. Well, then the person who's making that change should be sitting here explaining why that change occurred because it affects our distribution to you. So what exactly do you want us to provide? And that's what we need to know. What you, exactly you are, do you, you are You've been quoting to me the ORC all morning. Right. You are required to provide us actual numbers, actual, two years, actual numbers. You've provided us two different sets of numbers that are supposed to be actual. It's it's a conundrum. Again, which is, which is actual? Which one is right? We can tell you that the unaudited actual numbers that we receive that, that we have are what we provided to you. Now they're audited and we're indicating that, you know what, after an audit, those numbers can change. As With all due respect, you don't numbers. receive the number that you, re that the auditor of state doesn't give you the number of the money you receive. You, you receive the money and you right. pay it in. You account for that. The auditor of state doesn't account for your money. And you account for the amount that you've paid to us, correct? That's correct. And that's why there's a difference. Okay. We show we gave you one number, you say you got another. Okay. So somewhere there's money that so isn't accounted need, for. So it needs to be modified to reflect the amount that you've identified? I, I'm saying it, I don't know what it needs to be. Have you identified or audited that number? Well, it's it's pretty simple what's given to us, correct? No, I'm not looking to find where you made your mistake. I'm just identifying the mistake was made. Okay. 
So, I mean, you, you want to come here and want me to do the work. I'm not going to do the it's work. The audit is in process. So, again, okay. <laughs> here we which are. Which set of numbers is correct? That was the, can you tell us which set of numbers is correct? The ones you gave us last year or the ones you gave us this year? I was not the fiscal officer last year. Okay. But you are. I work. I am. Okay. I worked, <laughs> but I did not. As I said, I came in as the new fiscal officer. I wanted to have outside experts look at our financials, our revenues, our expenditures, what's been received. We contracted with James E. Zepfa, who worked with the state auditor's office to get the amounts that were entered into UAN and that are provided there. So a six thousand out of a six million dollar budget. As yes, there's a potential variance, but does it statutorily impact the tax budget? I don't know. I, I don't know. So what? So what? Because you can't tell me which one's right. I am looking. I am getting this number for the first time here. I am looking at this number. I don't have. You your gave view. us the number. <laughs> Look at it. Looking at it for the first time. This is what I you don't gave see us. that. I that that the top document you have you, was not generated by myself. Well, that was what was presented. Oh, so the top. And as I have no, said, that's what we, you gave us last year. Your 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 there. entity. And yeah. as I have said, we have worked with outside auditors to look at that information. So I'm looking at that six million eight hundred ninety six thousand. I'm seeing that for the first time. We requested to get this information ahead of time so that we could provide and be like, oh, OK, you this had is it in front of you. This was you all you, did, you didn't you mean you didn't know that last year. I'm like getting this variance. You didn't look at last, you didn't look at last year's submission. submission. And look at the column. Because it was so fraught with issues no, last it wasn't. year. It was just transpositional. It was just a couple of things. So it was fixed overnight. Your, so, your so, board fixed it overnight, according to your guys' reports. Knowing what we know now, and, and you've identified evidently discrepancies, where, where do we go from here? Well, let's continue on. Yeah, because I think there's other issues. So you've submitted um, a reserve fund. Okay, go back. <clears throat> Leave that one, one more, right there. So you requ you requested money to be put in a reserve fund. I think it's 1.3 million. I guess a couple of questions. I I will leave the first one for Jim to discuss. The second one is, I don't know. Did you have council set up these reserve funds? I mean, did did you set these up? The reserve funds for them, pursuant to 5705.13. We worked with council. Yes. To to you with you. I'm not, you know, my communication otherwise with my uh, my client is privileged communication. Okay. I'm not here to do that. Okay, so somebody set up this up, I'm assuming, with counsel. There is no maximum amount stated for a reserve. According to 5705.13c, you must have a maximum amount established in your resolution. Your resolution reads that you're providing a minimum of $1 million will be reserved for one-time revenues such as wetland mitigation credits, donations, and or grants received for this purpose. There's no mention in that paragraph in your resolution of a maximum amount to, to collect. So you could get $100 million in that fund. You could get $200 million. You could lock it in $5 million. <clears throat> the law requires, a court, you, you stated you did this pursuant to this law, and so therefore this commission has no oversight over it. But the reality is the law has to, you have to have created it lawfully. You can't just make up the rules. The rules are defined very simply in it. You didn't provide a term um, when it, you said that the, the, the reserve fund commences upon receipt of the revenue, which implies every time you put revenue into the fund, the term starts over again. That's not how reserve funds are set up. Reserve funds begin the moment your board passes them. That's the commencement date of a reserve fund. And they can't go longer than 10 years from that date. And that's easily calculated the moment you pass that resolution. And that's I, not if, how this reserve was set up. 
So, and the, the oversight and the review of that is by the state auditor's office, correct? They go through that's the process? Actually, we have a responsibility to I not... I understand you can report to it, but that's not... Are we? I, I, I didn't answer we're the question. Yet. Yet. No, I didn't answer the question. No, 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 we are here for that because if, if we're going... If, if you haven't lawfully set up a reserve fund... And who then, made that determination? Well, well, I mean, you're on, you're the prosecutor, obviously, and I know that you're also sitting on this board. Um, but has there been a legal determination of that? Or yes, that there has. Been, okay, who's made that determination? Ms. Ryan. And when did that happen? Today, like five. That would be ago? A, that'd be a privileged communication what, that we're be, not going to okay. discuss. And you're going to actually utilize that and make your decision today. Well, I, we haven't had the benefit of it. Any, I appreciate any, you want to be fair to us. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. You any, indicated how you want any, to be fair to us. Any lawyer that could read the statute would realize that you have to state a maximum. You have to have a term, no longer than ten years. You have to. You know, and Chuck, you didn't give Chuck a chance to finish, but the statute. Pretty much sets forth the checklist of what is required for a reserve fund. I think the, the board's resolution. The statute does. Okay, well, the board's resolution. Auditor, the state auditor is the one to make that determination. But no, no, no. A court over the legality of it. Well, I mean, I don't, are you going to sit here with a straight so face and tell us that this is today, properly set up? For the first time that you have an opinion indicating that you admit that somehow this was illegally created or didn't comply with statute. Well, Ms. I, Ms. Pay, five hours before. She sent us a request for more information, stated to a whole bunch of people at the auditor's office that this was lawfully created. She stated and it we was have no, lawfully created. There's been no decision that it is not. Well, I think the we've just stated for the record it. that we do believe we have an opinion that said well, it was not. Yeah, yeah one that it was, the prosecutor just pulled out. It was de it's devoid of, where's the maximum? And he sits on the board wow. that we got now. And we've been asking for since last week. Since Thursday. Again, apparently, I, Lord knows how long you've known about it. But I'm glad we're being treated fairly here. I really appreciate this. Well, I, again, if you set up if, if you set up your fund <laughs> improperly, I, I don't understand how that's our problem. But if the fund isn't proper, then you squirreling away millions of dollars into that fund, well, that takes that out of the equation, and that is something for us to consider. So if we're going to consider whether a levy's properly authorized and the reserve fund isn't legal and it wasn't set up properly by your council, then that money's in play, and we should determine whether you have excess account balances. That's the point. This but, Understood. And okay. I'm glad but, that you let us know about that at 12, about 13 today. No, Again, it's not clear. I'm not, you, I don't, so thank you. I'm not the legal counsel for the park district. I, I shouldn't have to go Your there and read the correct. statute. No, it doesn't. No. Read, read the revised, uh, clearly you're not reading the revised code, so. You know, I mean, with all due respect, you did, you did submit to the uh, budget commission to have money certified in this reserve fund over a month ago. And we have replied back, we are talking to the prosecutor about issues with your request. So you have known for a month that, that the Budget Commission had issues with this particular fund and certifying money into it. It would be improper for the auditor's office or the Budget Commission to certify money into a fund that isn't lawfully created. Don't you agree with that? Assuming that it was... Unlawfully Assuming created. it was unlawfully we that, created... We don't know that to be the case. Assuming it was... There is an opinion... Letter from. Assuming it was unlawfully created, you would agree that it would be wrong for the Budget Commission to certify money into that fund. It would likely be a crime. You, we've not only not certified into that fund, you have already appropriated money and you've already expended it. And you're criticizing us for timeliness. We let you know months ago there was a problem with the with the reserve fund. I think the auditor of state what, will have a problem with that. And whether they do or not, that's something we'll need to address if, when that happens, obviously. And we're here to comply with the law. We've always been. We've, we're asking for information. We asked for these slides. We at least had a better idea. We got a, we were promised a week before this that we would have the identification of the issues. We got it last Thursday. We asked for clarification because there were just three little items that were listed. 
no response at all. And today, you, this you knew hit. you had you didn't need clarification. Well, she wrote a she, five page email to 20 people. What some of the issues were. No, she didn't make any. She didn't that. state. I'm assuming these are the issues. She definitely told them all three issues. She figured out what was wrong. And she and also it was all followed bunk. up with your office asking for clarification. With five a and a half problem. hours after she told everybody on this distribution, she then had questions. That's what you're trying to convince me of. I don't buy that. She had questions. I had questions. I asked. I asked for information on this. Okay, let's just keep going. Let's just go on. So I think you got through two of the reserve fund de deficiencies. Well, you know, I mean, they, I think they don't want to even. Maybe you don't want to hear the other deficiencies. Well, go ahead. No, we, we want. So to hear you are sourcing. It's it's now these are not fatal, but they're they're a cause of caution. You are sourcing this reserve fund from a revenue stream, not from a fund. The problem with doing that is if you ever. If you ever close this fund down, you're required by law to return the money to the fund in which it came. If you're sourcing it to a revenue stream, where's that fund? You're getting it from donations, for example. Where do you put it? You, you, you don't know its target, so you can't put it back. That's a problem. The resolution's purpose does not align with what you're, you're, you provided us both the resolution and the minutes for this budget submission. The minutes do not reflect the same purpose as your resolution does. That's a huge concern. Now, I've been told by our council, the resolution trumps the minutes, but the public is reading the minutes. So it's disingenuous to tell the public, oh, it's for wetland mitigation or something else, if in fact it's for one purpose and that's to buy land. So that's an issue. And, 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 and again, the uh, under 5705.13c, it allows acquisition improvement as a listing of proper authorized purpose for this. You're not indicating that exactly. wetlands uh, protections or mitigation or otherwise. Yeah, but you didn't choose those all those other purposes. You chose in your resolution one purpose, which was called purchase or acquisition of land. You didn't choose those other purposes. And we provided you a, uh, I think, a whole uh, fairly substantial uh, long-term capital plan as it relates to land acquisition addition in addition to a lot of other things that we're to utilize these funds for. I'm specifically talking about Just the, the minutes that you were provided. I'm, I'm, I'm specifically referring to the minutes that you provided in that packet and comparing it to the resolution that contained the actual purchase statement. The purpose statement is very clear. It's to buy more land. It says simply to accumulate resources for acquisition. And that's in the minutes, but so there is. And that's not in the minutes. That's that in your resolution. In the resolution. There's a discrepancy between the resolution, the whereas clause and resolution, or in the, uh, that's in the resolution and the minutes themselves. The minutes talked about the wetlands, correct? Uh, they talked about a variety of other, Mr. Oros was quoted four or five different items that it would be included in, not just purchase of land. Okay. So either the board is confused because I'm guessing the board had that mm -hmm. conversation or it wouldn't be represented in the minutes or the resolution doesn't match what the board believes it did. To the next one. Well, you, you want me to touch on the tax? Yeah, I'm oh, sorry. Yes, quick. the first so, one. So, I guess even if there weren't the the two fatal stakes with setting up the reserve fund, um, so I mean, obviously the reserve fund doesn't comply with 5705.13, but a greater issue is it's our opinion that. The park district doesn't have the statutory authority to establish a reserve fund under 5705.13. So 5705.13c only allows taxing authorities of a subdivision to establish a reserve fund. And a park district is not a taxing authority of a subdivision. You are a taxing unit, which is separately defined in the revised code. And so based upon the revised code language, it's our opinion that even if you did had done it correctly, which you didn't, that you don't have the statutory authority as a park district to even set up a reserve fund under 5705.13c. And when you, and I know you're reading from that letter that's in front of you, at least part of the paraphrasing, uh, is that when you say it's our opinion, whose opinion is that? The legal opinion provided by my office to the Budget Commission. But, you know, I would welcome you to read the statute and look at the definitions. It's, it's pretty evident. 
before, please. So if I mean, if you don't, if you don't want to take our word for it. There are three sources that you can get these requirements in 5705.13c. One is the Ohio Compliance Supplement. That's the Auditor of State's documents. Every year they produce a series of compliance statements. In that compliance supplement, they give you the exact requirements of every ORC, including reserve funds. Um, I can give you the page numbers if you need them, but it is in that document. It clearly says you have to have a maximum amount identified. You must have a definitive term, and it must be defined upon passage of the ordinance or resolution. And that document was used for the creation of this? Uh, apparently it wasn't read, but it may have been used. Um, there's also a memorandum from this office. Actually, the Budget Commission sent out a memorandum on Oct in October of 2020, which gave um, best practices for setting up reserve funds. So even if you were authorized by law to do it, I mean, those available resources were there. I've actually done training classes with the uh, treasurer or the treasurer of Stark County uh, for the Ohio Association of, um, of Treasurers um, on reserve funds. And one of the identifiers we use is you do not unlawfully create a reserve fund. It will go afoul. And at some point, that money is considered unencumbered carryover. It's not authorized to be reserved. When did you uh, find out that we created this reserve fund? When you applied for us to certify the monies a month ago. And when a month ago? That's well, I'm I'm a guessing a month, maybe it was longer than a month. Like May. Yeah, so May. prior to us submitting this budget, you you had knowledge of that. No, no, we've we've we that we created the reserve fund. We were sent we were sent the request to certify money into the reserve fund. We communicated to the park that there were some issues with the reserve fund. We were going to have it reviewed by our legal counsel. And then we have not certified those monies into the reserve fund. Even though we didn't certify the monies into the reserve fund, the park district moved ahead and appropriated those monies and then spent some of them. That's not accurate. It's been appropriated, it's not been spent. You didn't, you guys, you didn't buy a $279,000 piece of property? No. Your minutes reflect you did. You approved to buy it? I think you, you should understand it. Shouldn't rely on their minutes, no. but you you didn't purchase two hundred seventy nine thousand dollars piece of property. The minutes are incorrect. Uh, the minutes said to enter into negotiations for that piece of property, so doesn't necessarily mean we purchased it. So was it purchased? It's not. Okay. So you have not expended the money. We have not. Let's go to the next slide. That's good. So I guess the last test that we have is. This commission tends to do two tests. One is need and one is reasonableness. I guess even even in light of giving the benefit of the doubt on all parts that reserve fund was lawfully created, that the money was set aside properly, it was done in conformance with 570513C. I, I guess from a reasonableness perspective, I have a challenge. And one is you're creating a reserve fund to put aside an, an unknown amount of money. We know you put in about 1.3 million initially, um, although your documents show you're going to fund it with 1 million initially. Um, and we don't know what the upper limit will be. And you're setting that aside to buy more parkland. Yet your commissioners, or at least one of your commissioners, is telling the public you're going to be closing parks. So you got to ask the question, how is that reasonable? You're buying more land, but you can't afford to keep the ones you have open. How does that pass the reasonable test? I mean, from my perspective, I just, you know, one, in terms of the issues that have been identified here, since th this is the <clears throat> first time we have been given a complete analysis and a discussion what these issues are, and you've indicated you'd be willing to give us some pages of the, I think, the, the compliance uh, entity that identified might have been state auditor's handbook i believe and you also indicated that there was some other information you provided i would like to get that and have the benefit of it and ask that you know once we do discuss all these issues that we be, be given a reasonable time as we, while we're speaking of reasonableness to address and understand these issues i'd ask for a copy of the legal opinion also so we can address uh, the issue over the legality of the creation of this fund before a decision is made by this body. I think that would be reasonable. In terms of 
what we do as a body, and you know, we have a capital project that identifies land acquisition, and the purpose of the park is to protect lands, to create parks for recreational purposes and other proper governmental purposes. It's what we do. And so um, the fact that a park is closed doesn't necessarily mean that there may not be a reason to acquire additional parks, preserve resources, or otherwise. And again, I don't know if that's you know, within your purview to decide how it's operated. I understand the financial part of it is. I understand that there's oversight there. But as it relates to that, we gave you an entire capital project well, I could, budget, I could. and we score all those priorities in order. And you know, again, I don't. Well, if, if you're I'm concerned not, with, if, you with the, specific, if, if your position is that you don't believe this body has the ability or the responsibility to test reasonableness and need. I think that's well defined in law. I didn't say that. Well, oh. you, you said you understand the financial concerns, but not the reasonableness. Reasonableness is not necessarily financial. It's statement of position. You have stated to the public you want to buy more land. You've also stated to the public you're going to close parks. I, I guess that, that's a conflict. So is that the, that you want that explained? That's a conflict. Well, no, I no, no. I guess, I guess what's confusing to me is, you know, last year, we reduced your revenue by $1.9 million. And, you know, that was supposedly, you know, s such a fatal blow and, and you were gonna have to close parks. And in the past year, you, have, you haven't closed any parks. In fact, you've opened a new one, correct? Okay, so, so that was you guys lying about all that when we took away the 1.9 million. That's yeah. ridiculous yeah. to say that. Well, if they're making misstatements that they're going to close parks and they didn't close any, but they opened one. And then I guess the other thing that, that when we're looking, you know, we have to make this determination here. So we took away $1.9 million of your money, which was going to supposedly cripple your operations and your mission. But you still have enough money in your budget you submitted now to squirrel away $1.3 million into a land acquisition fund? John, right? That's what's. I guess we didn't. I guess we didn't cripple. That's what's. I guess we didn't cripple your operations, did we, John? The revenue. We crippled them so much that you could save another 1.3 million. The revenue is based on full utilization of the approved tax levy, correct? Isn't it? You're, you're not revenue. getting full tax levies this year. Well, it, it, you're being. You're being. Your taxes are reduced this year. By 1.9 so million. 1.9 million. Yeah. So in the year that your taxes were reduced by 1.9 million, you open a 1.3 million dollar reserve fund with an unknown cap. From non-tax dollars. It, it doesn't matter what the source of the money is. Money is money. It's one-time money. It, <laughs> it's one-time money as it relates to wetland mitigation credits, which is really, that is the purpose of the creation of a land acquisition fund because it's deals with the land. So it's that money is different than it, it doesn't supplement the tax revenue. It enhances the parks. What, whatever the money comes into an entity, whether it comes through taxes or whether it comes through donations, grants, wetland mitigations, all is tested for need, regardless of source. Need is a requirement that we all have to match. So if your donations the reason, cannot be made unless you test them for a need. It's no, not, but if you're collecting $8 million over. dollars in property taxes and you consistently get X amount in other revenue, we can consider that in exactly. whether you need the $8 million in property so, taxes. So we determine whether we can acquire property? No. Right. So what we're saying is, if, for, if it, let's say in a given year you get $10 million donation and you're collecting from the taxpayers $6 million in taxes, and you come and you say, we have a need for $6 million. We can take away all $6 million from the taxpayers because you have $10 million in donations that can be used to replace that $6 million because you haven't justified a need for that money. The revenue, once it hits the depository, becomes subject to need. Every year, so if by there's the, long-term needs that are identified that we don't have, we're not talking. Well, but I'm just saying, talking in a budget. You, you give just us a hypothetical. You get a ten million dollar donation. You'd say that we're not entitled to any money. Then. I'm saying if you came to the budget commission without defining a need in excess of the six million that you were getting from taxes, and you had ten million more in revenue, 
this budget commission could take away that six million dollars for that given year you because you had excess money. Well, because you you're, could you're, you're grilling me like it. I'm on the stand. But but the fact of the matter is, we're the ones getting grilled here. Well, we've been you know accused we're not of giving lying, you squirreling away. I love criminal. the fact that our prosecutors make well, comments. Trust me, tr fine. while you while you're posing for holy pictures. I've been accused for the last six here. months, and this board has been accused for the last six months of shutting down parks, taking away your health care, causing you to close parks. That's all been documented in the public's eye. So I, I, you'll have to forgive us if we're not a little sensitive to being thrown under the bus while you come and act innocent. That's just not been true. Well, so the fact of the matter is, and you're hypothetical, getting back to that, is, you know, if we have, and we do have documented a long-term capital plan, we've gone through a process in our organization to score those needs, how important they are, how they tie to our purpose. So obviously that document, which by the way, was submitted to you, so you, you get to see what the needs are, has land acquisition well in excess of a million three or otherwise. And it's, it's part of, that's what we're doing. If you want an explanation of why we didn't close a park, you know, uh, we could talk about that decision. I don't know. I haven't been involved in it. We've got it. We do have a representative of the board here. We also have represented the park district, but we do operate this for our purpose, which is to operate the parks, to protect the land, the natural resources, all for the benefit of Geauga County. That's what we do. The wetlands, I, I think that's what we do. And I understand these issues and we, we eventually do need to get past this so we can try to move forward for the benefit of the community and taxpayers. And I understand maybe politically there's some ugliness to it or otherwise. No, I, I um, think I think the issue is you, you have not been open to question from anyone, including the public. The public is frustrated in part because the only time questions can get asked is at this meeting. Once a year, we have you have park commission you, meetings all the time. You don't allow public. You don't allow public comment. Public they're comment is statutorily they're not public exactly. That's your right. But, well, you know, but they don't answer, complain when you get barraged with look, questions. The one time a year that you have to answer questions and you're held accountable because you're totally unaccountable. The one time a year you're held accountable and you have to answer questions. This is the reaction we get. This this is it. So I think that that tells the public exactly what they need to know about how transparent forthcoming you are with their money. And then you're telling us about transparency and you squirrel away this legal opinion, you squirrel away your comments, you squirrel away and as you're- You won't even tell mind, us, you won't even tell us- You squirrel away well, these and you then you even let us know you, about- You're telling today. us it's privileged who prepared the reserve fund, yet you want me to hand over our privileged legal opinion to the well, budget You're relying commission? on it, you're reading it. So you're here so are you. Read the revised code, it's not rocket science. You're, you're relying you're on your reserve unit. fund, right? I mean, that's your whole basis of putting away 1.3 million. All I asked was, did you get a legal opinion before you created that fund? And you say it's protected. Well, okay, you're speaking to these people at the auditor's office, quoting ORC 5705.13c. And you're also stating that you're a taxing authority. I, I, I don't think you're a lawyer. I know you're not the lawyer for the parks. So and I'm you're assuming- not a lawyer, correct? No, but I'm assuming some lawyer gave you the opinion that you're a taxing authority. I, I, I'd love to hear that from the lawyer. I, I mean, I, it's, I think it's a reasonable question to ask since that's whether, what was stated. And by the way, whether a lawyer indicated that or not doesn't mean whether that's the case or not. I mean, ultimately, it's at the end of the day, it's up to what, you know, if there's a determination by a final body who has authority over it, we know that. You know, this issue is something, again, that, we're finding out about this legal opinion today at what was it, 12, 13? You knew there was an issue, Counselor, with the reserve well over a month ago. You knew it because you submitted well, we didn't, it. You the submitted issue it for, of whether it's a subdivision or a unit. No, 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 no. With setting it up, we I did not certify today. the money over a month ago when you submitted it. All we were told is the issue was tabled. We did not know what the issue was. We're learning for the first time yeah. today what your issues were. It was referred to legal counsel. So, so yeah, how do, how do, how do, how do we how do we legal yeah. counsel, yeah. John? Well, the first time we were told. That's what we were told. Well, so how no. do we how do we add it? Go ahead, John. The, the first time, all we knew is the issue was tabled. Did not know why. 
and then the first time that we saw that we were, you were doing it well, that's legal exactly true no, and the, then the first time was on the form that was given last week was the legal opinion I so you didn't read the league of women voters synopsis of listening to the budget commission and come to the conclusion that you did understand why that was not provided to me until this week So you did have access to that information. I mean, all of our all of our budget commission meetings are recorded. All of our budget commission meetings have public comment. You could come to any one of our budget commission meetings. You actually don't even have to come. They're broadcast. You could you could be online. You could have asked the question: Could we ask why this is not being permitted? See, you want us to be able to serve you data while you sit back and blind blind the residents with of any ability. To ask a question, we openly discussed this in a public meeting. We did. I mean, we, That's we didn't, how the we didn't go voters. into executive session and make all our decisions. We sat in an open meeting and publicly discussed the issues with the reserve fund and our concerns and referred it to legal counsel to review. What's your basis to make a claim that we went in executive session and make the decision? No, he said we didn't go we into didn't. executive. Right. Are you implying that we did? We didn't. Okay, but you made that we, comment. We, you implying we, that we did? We haven't. We don't. We discuss things okay. in open you session. You implying that we did anything? If you had, if you had, pay, if you had paid any attention to our meetings, you it, this isn't some surprise. So, so we, again, if, we if communicated this, this to you. I guess if there was this question mark about why haven't we gotten our money certified for this fund, if you don't want to pick up the phone and call, you could simply just get online to one of our meetings and watch, and then at the end of the meeting, say. When it's time for a public comment, hey, we just like to know why wasn't this approved? What's the status? So as we move forward, as we move forward, we obviously are there any other issues that you have? That's all I have for this. That's mine. Okay. Because obviously there's a lot of items that have been thrown at us. We would like an opportunity to address those items before a decision is made. And that's what we're asking for. I'd like to hear the rest of the issues so there's no surprises, and I'd like the backup information here. And obviously, we need to address these items, um, you know, and we will do so in a timely manner. I mean, it's your house isn't in order. You, you come to us and you want us to clean up the house. I, I, I don't understand this. You're not going to like the way we clean up the house, John. You've identified a reserve fund that was not lawfully constituted, didn't even comply with any part of the law, but you've identified $1.3 million that you can set aside. The $1.9 million is gonna be returned to your budget in 23, right? Next year. That indicates to me there's $1.3 million that's available to be brought back, to be given back to the taxpayers in 2023. I see no other resolution to this matter. The fact that your numbers don't balance year to year, that's embarrassing to you and your operation. But uh, to Ms. Pay's point that it's only $6,900, I work very hard. We all work very hard to balance to the penny every day. $6,900 is $6,900 I took from taxpayers. You're saying it's inconsequential? It's not because every person here that lives in the county pays taxes. And those that don't, they're pursued and they end up paying interest and penalties. $6,900 is not in, inconsequential. To somebody, it's a lot of money. Otherwise, he's gonna foreclose on them and they lose their home. All for the taxes or all for the Geauga Park District. This is not easy stuff, John, but our job is to represent all 95,000 taxpayers. And the fact that you continue to not allow public comment at your meetings is wrong, and you know that. Chris, you, you do realize that that it's a team at Jaga Park District. I, I appreciate that you're addressing me, but uh, and, and no, we way am I personally responsible for for what what you're what you're communicating so John um, you're the yeah. pointy end of the spear yeah, thank you Chris everybody yeah. works for you if you were to come out and say from now on 
our meetings are going to be open and we will offer that, time that, for that's, comment. That's not true. I, I work for a board of park commissioners. You, you know that. So. And if you tell them this is what we need to do, they'll say, you're right, because you okay. are. You need to lead. All right. <laughs> so, Councillor, if you want us to go through your budget now, we can. How much time do we have remaining for the budget process? Till September 1st? September 1, we have to have it worked yeah. out. Can they amend this budget proposal? They can't. We have to make the amendment. Once a budget's submitted, they can't change. So what is your recommendation? <clears throat> I guess what I what I what I struggle with a little bit is I think they got some very bad legal guidance with this reserve fund. Oh so I I hesitate while I understand your rationale of it seems like they have an extra one point three million dollars. Seems it's clear they do. They've already appropriated. Seems that way, but you know, would their budget have been different if if they had gotten the correct advice and realized that that there were these issues with the reserve fund? Um, I, I would hope, I, you know, I, I would hope that that would have been different. I I just hesitate. I hesitate to to do a, another reduction. When they were relying, I mean, again, there were plenty of warning flags not to rely on the reserve fund, um, but the fact remains they've been re relying on this faulty reserve fund. And do you do, you, do you know, did, did is you, that fair? Did, I don't did, know. Did you guys fair. get any, did the, did the park get any communication of caution from anyone about this reserve fund? Absolutely not. You didn't other get, than us. <laughs> you didn't get a letter from anybody that said, Putting caution in the wind and saying you really ought to sit and talk to the budget commission before you do this. No. Real. So one thing, can I speak to real quick on on kind of need from my perspective with the yeah, who you are. Uh, I'm Matt McHugh. I'm the deputy director and planning director for the park district. So the capital project um, plan that I put together. If you look at a lot of those projects on there, they're their infrastructure, their maintenance, they're replacing a bridge, their asphalt work. Um, we have restoration projects on there. And again, the acquisition and the balance between improving parks and maintaining parks to keep the high level that we have, I think is critical <laughs> to maintain the parks that we've had. Um, so we have a balance of projects that you can see there's a lot of cost, you know, those twos and ones are basically infrastructure. We need to do those projects. Um, the ability to preserve and protect water resources and, and pursue funding for restoration projects. Those are all things that are great for Geauga County. Um, most of the water in Geauga County is well water. Protecting those water resources and preserving open space and green space is is critical you know i think for a successful county um so again all these funds that may be for acquisition or for capital um again it it all goes into what we've done as a park district for you know the last 60 years to try to try to serve the the residents of the county so i guess just consider a lot of you know a fund over here is going to greatly impact our ability to do other improvements that are critical so I, and and I, first of all i think you do a great job personally i, I believe that i think you do a wonderful mm -hmm. job for this county for the park I, I think there's some confusion that that this board doesn't like the park or doesn't like what you do i i voted for all the park levies i you know i don't know about the next one because i think you have too much money but i voted for all the park levies I like the park. People, there's some confusion that we don't like the park. We don't like you lying to taxpayers, misrepresenting issues, not being transparent, hoarding money, not having your financial house in order. That's what we care about. Those are the issues we care about. We, you know, we we want you to do what you're doing. And I think when 
you know, the people from you on down, I think, do a wonderful job. I, I really do believe that. Um, you just got, when you look up on, on the ladder, there, there's a lot of problems there, and there has been for years, and we're trying to address it. So, and, and again, you can function within it. You have a general fund and a land and construction fund. So doing some of these things that, that you are talking about, right, that's what these funds are for. And, and, and what had happened over the years was these, these fund balances got mm -hmm. really high. You weren't spending the money. If you spend the money, that's great. That either spend the money or if you don't need the money, give it back to the taxpayers, which you voluntarily have done once since I've been on this board, and which was involuntarily done for you last year since I've been on this when I, since I've been on this board. So there, there's been two instances over the years where money had to be given back to the taxpayers because you just had too much of it. And if you knock out this reserve fund and you're not aggressive with your projects, you're going to get into that jackpot again. And 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 Chris thinks you're already in it to the tune of 1.3 million. I'm, I'm not that convinced yet, but but do you understand where we're, unfortunately, where we're coming from? Unfortunately, with preservation and conservation opportunities, you don't always know when they're going to come along. So without having a fund specifically for that, you know, it's it's hard to say. Yeah, next year we 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 know we're going to have an opportunity to buy something. I understand that, but you can't you can't sit on five or six million dollars in your general fund and 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 hoard that from the taxpayer. I mean, that's their money. Just because you say, well, some purchase opportunity might come up. Well, and I think the law in some ways has taken that into account, right? So, fifty seven oh five thirteen C does allow for certain entities to reserve finite amount of money lawfully to do exactly what you say in the event that an opportunity comes you've accumulated resources to be able to pull that trigger however that same law has certain limiting factors it has a time limit it has a dollar amount limit and most importantly it limits who can do it and for some reason taxing units were not one of the entities that were allowed to do it i don't really know why but it is what it is. I mean, and I think in some part, you know, we can't let everyone just create these pockets and just in case something comes along, especially in light of the fact that, you know, your board has been very vocal. And part of that voice was, hey, we're going to have to close parks because of what these guys did. And so, so that tells the taxpayer we're hurting for money, so we have to close a facility. It puts the fear syndrome into their hearts. And then at the same time, you say, but we want to save some of your money, and we have $1.3 million right now that we can do that with to buy more. So to your point, I, I guess that's where the rub is, and there is a reasonable test. And we're not the only ones making that test. The public makes it every day. And it's we've got to get past this nightmare at some point. And I don't know that we're going to if immediately upon leaving these kind of one once a year dialogues, you go back, shut out the public, get into your, your room, bad mouth and trash every other elected who's ever voiced a concern against what you're doing. And then you wait 11 months to come back to the pile. And the whole time warning the new fiscal, you're in for a nightmare, you're in for a nightmare. Well, I, I guess what do you want us to do? Some people design the system in which they operate. And you can't be professing to be the crown jewel if you're behaving like costume jewelry. That's the reality. Costume jewelry, you don't know what you're getting until you take it home and tear it apart. If you don't open yourself up to the public, are you really the crown jewel or are you costume jewelry? That's my question. I mean, we reduced, we re we reduced the library, reduced DD, We've reduced Mets, uh, Mets voluntary mental health. mental health. We've reduced JFS. We've reduced them. None of that turned into this three ring circus fiasco. No. So is it an us problem or is it a you problem? Because all of them got reductions. And I didn't see months and months of stories in the paper, but frankly, people make them fools out of themselves. So, but 
again, let's getting yeah, back. I, I mean, do you guys do I would, do it I on would, a table? I, what I was going to suggest is I think we need to just everybody needs to just calm down and think about it. And you know, oh, I'm ready to go. You're not taking his advice, I see. Yeah. They've identified $1.3 million. They've appropriated the money illegally. I, I want to, I, I would like to do this the right way and do it very, very systematically. They've asked for a series of documents. Let's get them what they asked for. I mean, it, we've still got a couple of weeks. Let's, I would propose that we reconvene and, and see where this goes. That gives them an opportunity. I mean, there's an old saying. You know, the the opponent can always take a reactionary mo mode, or they can take a different mode to that. What the what they do after leaving this meeting will tell us what what they're gonna what we have in store for us in the future. If it's more of the same, then it's more of the same. We'll go down the road. If there's going to be a course change, then we've got to reach compromise, and we've got to reach a position where we can coexist. But I I personally believe, and this is just coming from me as a taxpayer in Jaga, I think you're adding a frustration level that is unnecessary by denying the public the ability of voicing their concern. Because we get constantly pushed by the public. They're not listening to us because they won't. You need to do something. And it's all it all bottles into a one-day event. And that's part of that, what comes out. No other entity has this problem because all of the other entities listen. They let their public say something. I think, I get it that it's not lawfully required. It's not. But you're made up of people who are paying taxes. How would you feel if you're denied a voice at the table? We can we do public comment at the end of these budget hearings. It's not that we always get good questions, and it's not that we always get pleasant requests. It's because it's the people's rights. It's their they have a, they have a right to speak their mind. And if you deny it, you harbor issues that come out some other in some other area. So. I, I really encourage, especially Mr. Bates, I know you're here, you're a board member, you know, any other board members that are here, I encourage you, consider that. It's it's not as difficult as you think. It's not, there'll be some tough questions, but that's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's what you do with it. Okay, so you want to reduce it? You want to table it? I want to table it. <clears throat> Guess it's up to you. <laughs> I don't think I'm in favor of reducing it because, again, I, I, there, there's a there's a fairness to they're relying upon this reserve fund that well I, that they didn't to realize. Your, to your point, even if the reserve fund is not lawful, you have given us evidence which suggests a requirement of need. So, as, even if it's in the general fund, if they argue I'm going to do these projects, there's that that evidence is present. And so we can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. That's what I'm worried about. I get the where we're at with this, and that's why I think we need to slow it down. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'll move the table with that. What we'll tell when? Well, that's what we have. What's time. available? I'm back August 31st. That's well. That's the last day. That's a little bit. Why? Left. Why not? Huh? You want to do that? Want to do it August 31st? Sure. It'd have to be in the morning. So. Mm -hmm. What time? Because the Jog mm -hmm. County Fair ribbon cutting ceremony is at noon. Well, then we should probably do it quarter to 12, and that'll guarantee us a 15 minute meeting. Yes. No, I should drive. That's going to take me 15 minutes. You want to do 9 o'clock? Um, or 10 o'clock? No, 9 would be good. Let's, it's, not, it's 9. Okay. Can, and then, I mean, I know you. Can I you know Howard will be <laughs> the ribbon cutting. Okay. He's holding the ribbon. So, uh, so is 9 work? I mean, we won't. Yeah. yeah. 9 work. Okay, and we and I'm I got to leave by eleven, so can't be that long. Okay, motion to so motion to vote. table. What reconvene is, this budget hearing on August thirty first at nine a.m. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. We appreciate the time to deal with that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Do we want to? Do we have other business? Yeah, no, we got to do it. Public. Public. Public, public comment. comment. Yeah. Yeah.
So thank we're going to thank you, General. We're thank going to open this for public time. comment. Um, anybody online or anybody in the room have any questions they want to? Thank you. Pose. You'll have to unmute yourself. To unmute, there's a little um, on that box on the table. Yeah, maybe we can do it remotely. Let's try. Oh, I, hear. I got you. Hang on, we're going to do it for you. Frank, can you? Oh, hang on. Oh, they got it. Yeah. Don't turn your camera. You're on. You're good. Who is who's on? Oh no. Is that oh, hang on. Yes. That's Hello, that's... Okay. Am I? Yep, you're on, Dave. You're on Dave Partington. Um, go ahead with your question. Uh, in reference. In reference to, uh, is a statement. In reference to Jennifer Hayes' comment that uh, she never uh, knew anything about this before, we sent her, that is Protect Jogger Parks, sent her a registered letter, which she should have received uh, in the week of July 4th, uh, that stated there might be problems with the uh, reserve fund and that it would be good to con consult with the uh, with uh, the auditor's office and the budget commission to make sure that all the things were in proper order so that they could pass this through. Uh, we received no response from that. So that's my comment. It happened. Uh, she had, we have a copy of the registered letter uh, and I would be glad to provide that to anybody that needs it. So that's my comment. Thanks. Do we want to request a copy of that letter for the board? Sure. Yeah, Dave, would you mind sending us a copy of it? We will be glad to. Thank you. We'll ask them about it at, on the 31st. Okay. You can't ask them questions, but we can. Yeah, Dave. I was disappointed to hear her say that uh, she had even received no communication whatsoever, because I know you asked twice. So there you go. Okay, thanks. thanks. Thank you. Any other questions from anywhere else? Diane? Okay. Diane, do you have a question? Okay, I did have a question, but I believe it's just been addressed. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. Any other questions from the league or no? Anastasia? Press. No? Had enough? Ready to go home? <laughs> okay, as there are any other callers have questions? Okay. Thanks, folks. Appreciate it. Oh, is there a motion? You have the stuff they submitted to the record. Ready. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay. We'll just stick all that. I'll make a motion to adjourn. No, I will. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. I'll take that back. Okay. All in favor? Say aye.